Uh, obviously, uh, thank you everyone for coming today. Um, officially, I'd like to announce my retirement from the game. Uh, a very hard decision to make. Um, as I've obviously played a lot of football and the one thing I was always looking for was my form to, to wilter, I suppose. And that was when I sort of knew that it was going to be time. But unfortunately for me, it hasn't been like that this year. I've still played some really good football, but after sitting down last Tuesday with Scotty and, and having a really good discussion about what my future is looking like, I've come to the right time for me to re retire and um, I'm, I'm completely at ease with it now and obviously got up in front of the boys and was pretty emotional, but um, just really, um, I suppose, just really proud of the way I've been able to fight out these, these 17 years in the system and it hasn't been the most easiest of careers, obviously at Carlton when we weren't going too well and then obviously massive decision to leave there and come here. But as I said earlier, Scotty's probably been the, one of the most inspirational like coaches I've ever had and the confidence that he's shown in me and was able to play my best football even right up until sort of last weekend and then, then this weekend. So um, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm gonna miss a lot, of, a lot of it and obviously the boys and the winning feeling and, and all that sort of stuff. But um, I know in, in my heart of hearts that this is, this is the right time for me to hang the boots up. Yeah. How tough, Jared, is it to make that decision when you're still playing good football? Yeah, it's probably that. It's, it makes it even harder. Um, yeah, it's but I've, I've been thinking about this for the last three years. I've been in the exact same situation for the last three years, not knowing if this was going to be my last year and same again at the start of the year, I wasn't 100% sure, but um, probably the one thing that I, I was, I don't want to play on and then end up playing twos or anything like that. So going out on top is been the best thing for me personally and I can walk away knowing that I've, I've given it my all and, and I was able to place the best footy that I could have. And I said to the boys earlier, if I had have left at 31, I would have probably been bitter and twisted with the way it sort of ended at Carlton, where now I can hold my head up high and, and know that I've proven that I am a, a good player and that I'm not this enigma that everyone speaks about. I play consistent football and um, it just makes, yeah, looking back on my career, that's probably the, one of my proudest things that I've been able to achieve. Did one thing tip it more than the other? It must have been tempting to go again. Yeah. Um, I think if there was a contract on the table, it would have been a very hard decision, but now it's, I, I wasn't willing to sort of wait. So I think, but in, in once I spoke to Brad and even the way I was sort of thinking, it's, it's the best decision that I've, I've come to. And, and like I said, I'm, I can leave the game knowing that, that I'm 100% satisfied that it's time to leave and, and have no regrets whatsoever. Brad, were you keen for him to play on next year? Well, I think the first thing is uh, to talk about the, the headspace that, that Wadey was in and what, what he was thinking and what was going through his head. I mean, I was certainly very open to it. I mean, we, we started that conversation, Wadey probably, Wadey thinking he, would, he might, may want to play on and that we would want him to, to play on. Um, but it's, you know, that's the relationship that we've been able to develop over time. We, the more we talked about the future and, and talked about the opportunities that, that Wadey will have off field and and all of those different things, we, we probably pretty quickly came to a decision like what are the pros versus the cons here. Um, and it's really important that that Wadey's comfortable with the decision. So um, clearly the footy he's playing at the moment is capable, but Jared himself said, I want to be a player that um, goes out too early, not too late. and there's always a risk if you play on that that may be the case that you that you end up going too late. But I mean, clearly, it's, it's incredible to think that a player in his mid 30s is still playing at the standard that Jared's playing. Um, proved that again on the weekend, and he's a vital member of our team and a much loved member of our team. Um, just what was that conversation, Brad? That conversation you had with him? How difficult was that? Yeah, in incredibly difficult at the beginning, but. Um, but as we talked, I mean, we, we talked more like mates than, than coach player. And, and you know, we always, I always approached it from a position of, well, what, what do you want to do? You know, there's, there's obviously other factors that come into play with these decisions. But, you know, the, 
the more we talked about what, what Wadey wanted to do, the more we thought that, well, perhaps this is the right time um, for him. And, and that's a decision that Wadey came to completely um, on his own. Um, I, I certainly didn't nudge him in one direction or the other. You know, we just talked about future opportunities and, and his career. Um, and very quickly, Wadey decided he was at, at peace with, with the decision. Question for both of you. How big a factor was that you've only managed 22 games, but you basically lost the season in the last couple just because your body keeps, I guess, letting you down at 35? Uh, no, that didn't come into it at all. Um, yeah, I've, even when Scotty got me here, it was never, we want you to play every single game. Obviously, I was 31 when I got here, and I remember Scotty sort of mentioning it would be nice to, to get half a season out of me in that, that first couple of years, but I've been able to play consistent footy when I've been out there, and yes, I would have loved to have played every single game, And but unfortunately, I haven't been quite lucky enough with, with injuries. You see some guys that play that don't miss any games at all, and I wasn't one of them, and I, I don't harp on it because I was always about... When I'm when I'm out there, I want to be able to perform at my best, and, and I have been. So, nah, it was that the injuries was never a, an issue. Jared, you mentioned the enigma tag before. It sounds like there's something that hurt you during your time. Uh, yeah, because I've played. I've always think I've thought I've played pretty consistent football. Um, Scotty just mentioned then I've averaged nearly almost two, three goals a game while I've been while I've been here. So I can't really do much more than than what I have and. And yeah, obviously a few issues when I was younger, but there was other things going on behind the behind doors. So that that they were sort of part of it. That I've, there's the stigma that's been sort of hung around for a, a long time, and and I've tr worked really hard at trying to break that, and I think I have. Um, but yeah, as I said before, I'm a hundred percent at ease of walking away, and I will miss so many things. There'll be a lot of things that I won't miss, um, but. Um, the 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 overriding issue, is, well, not the overriding issue, the overriding feeling is that it's it's time. What way you miss? Meetings. <laughs> <laughs> not getting cooked in meetings. I'm always getting right for that. But yeah, nah, just just things that I, I was saying to Heath in about two years' time. I'll I'll probably want those feelings back. But um, yeah, nah, it's just as I've been in the system for so long, and a lot of things have changed and. Uh, mentally, it's time. And the enigma, the enigma tag comes because he can do things that other players can't. I mean, Jared White has shown the ability over over 17 years to to play at the highest level and and, and do things on a footy field that most others just can't do. And so those players are often held to a higher standard. And the expectation is they do those freakish things all the time. I mean, and that's just. You know, no, that's an unreasonable expectation on anyone. And, but what we've seen from Wadey, I had a lot of people say that yeah, everyone can see the great qualities that he's got, but I had a lot of t people tell me all the things that he couldn't do. Well, he, he has left an indelible mark on the North Melbourne Football Club. He is, he's a complete footballer. He's improved the defensive aspects of our forward half in the four years he's been here. Uh, he's been a leader in that area. Um, so people who, who told me that Jared Wade's not a great defender, he, he has led the way at North Melbourne in that part of the game. Um, he's, everyone knows he's got a lead endurance. Uh, he's super quick. He's got vice-like hands. Uh, he's a beautiful kick. You know, like all the things you look for in a footballer, you know, that's, that's, what, that's the Jared Wade that I've seen over 17 years. And he's only improved, I think, at North Melbourne. But the other side that, that most people don't see is that and he surprised me, is how competitive he is. And, and he's got a, a fierce drive and will to win. So he's, he's not just been able to do great things on field, he's been able to do great things off field for us. And you know, it's, it's been a great decision that, that Jared and the club made to, to bring him to North Melbourne because we're all much better for having had him here. Speaking Jared, you must be pretty grateful for the kangaroos for prolonging your career and yeah. Playing finals and sharing all that. Yeah, obviously, um, Scotty's been such an important part of this second half of my career, obviously. And but that I loved my time at Carlton. Um, I probably need to mention that that what they gave me opportunity. Obviously, massive family history and with with dad. And it was a really hard decision to leave. And it was a decision at the time that I wasn't sure if it was the right one. 
um, leaving mates and leaving a club that I love so much. But Scotty instilled in me what he he thought of me as a player, and it just gave me great confidence. And I'm so glad that I've done that now because he saw everything, as he said, that a lot of people didn't see in me as a player, and just. The way he coached me from the second I sort of got down, he would, he just knew me as a player and a person. And it's it's so important to have that from a coach. It gives you such, I suppose, confidence in, in doing what you do. And he's just, he was been, he's been the perfect coach. We joked about it before. He would have liked to have been here for, he would, would have liked to have had me at 18 and I would have loved him to have as a coach when I was 18. This might've been a lot different um, outcome, but yeah, this, this journey's been amazing and I've loved and hated every second of it. <laughs> <laughs> you speak of how early on you were you know, getting in a bit of trouble with the tribunal. How pleased are you that went out of the game? Uh, you spoke about off-field stuff. So yeah, well, where, where I was at, oh, my body wasn't great at that stage and I was frustrated and unfortunately it comes out in certain ways and I think now it might have been a fine these days, but back then you're missing games and... <laughs> And yes, I, I did did have a few issues, but I worked really hard on on those and the I suppose mental part of my game. And um, yeah, it's been one of those things that they stick around and and it, it has flattened me because it was only a, a little period. And but it just made me stronger. It made me wanted to improve more, and it just gave me more drive to just I don't know, like just. Give it to the doubt. It's like, yeah, just just have a crack and, yeah. And Jared's Jared's learnt and grown from all that, and that's a great lesson yeah. for for all of, all young players. And it would have been a travesty if if that had defined him at 31 years of age. Now he leaves leaves the game, arguably at the peak of his powers, um, with that with injury and suspension not defining his AFL career. You know the the consistency of of performance, the consistency of effort, and you now all the positives that he's been able to to display over a long period of time. That, that's what will define him. And he leaves a great legacy for, for Nick Larkey and, and Ben Mackay and you know, all, all, a whole range of players at, at North Melbourne of, you know, that it's, I feel footy's hard and you go through ups and downs all the time, but usually a lot more downs than ups. And wade has been able to grow from it and develop and pass that on to our young players. And just on that, especially with what's happened this season, just your thoughts on the state that the club's in as you leave as a player? I think there's some really good growth coming and obviously not everyone wrote us off at the start of the year but got some really good kids coming through and blokes playing some incredible football and I can't really single anyone out at the moment because I'll get sprayed by everyone else for not singling them out. Um, but yeah, the next few years is going to be really exciting for the club and I'll look on from the in the crowd having a froth and with uh, great excitement. And, um, There'll be a side of me that would love to be out there, but there's another side of me that's let the boys do their thing, and um, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's 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 some really good, and exciting football coming. And what's next for you? Um, yeah, I've spoken to the PA and had a bit of a chat to them, so we'll just sort of wait and wait and see. Coaching's not out of the question, so see what happens and um, see what happens there. But yeah, no, basically at the moment just get through this last game and then chill out and sort of reassess once the footy season's done and yeah. You played six finals, you would have loved to have played more. What are your individual highlights, um, Jared? Um, the two Richmond finals, obviously. First one at Carlton, we were down by a bit and we came back and won in the second one, that was good too. Same sort of thing, we were down by a bit and I don't really like Richmond. Um, I never have. <laughs> I think it. I think it relates from dad, and then obviously the Carlton days, and we ha we ate them here too. So <laughs> that was. Um, <laughs> so I think we're I think we're jealous at the moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But having said that, they're playing good footy. Um, oh, just just little occasions along the way. Obviously, my first game, we sort of didn't get we didn't get the job done at. Um, at Carlton, but just having my family there and and um, yeah, just just finals and just I don't know, just they all sort of roll into one. It's just that it, it's a I won't leave this game with any disfeeling from anything, and I think that's I'm wrapped with that. Um, so yeah, I've obviously got a heap of memories, but 
they aren't, they aren't exactly come in the forefront just yet. I think the finals aspect, that's if there is a, a, only one, well, there's a number of regrets. Wadey mentioned before, I, I'm, I mean it when I say I, I would have loved to have coached Jared his whole career. I mean, it just would have been, you know, you, you can't help but think of the opportunities with, with the, the type of person he is and the, the attributes that he possesses and the way he approaches life and football. It would have been fantastic. But the other disappointment is that he's a big game player. You know, he's a big finals player. I mean, we, when we needed to score in finals, we, we opened things up for Wadey forward of the ball. When we're in front and we needed to defend, we put Wadey behind the ball. And I said to the players, if we'd been losing clearances, we would have put him on the ball you know, to go and win the thing for us. So he was a, everyone loves players who, who uh, can do fantastic things, but the players who do fantastic things when the stakes are the highest, you know, that, that just, just takes them to another level. And, and Wadey was a big, big game player. So six finals is, is almost a bit of a travesty because um, I sense if it had been more, you would have seen him perform on the big stage pretty regularly. Jared, years to come, do you think you'll see yourself in North Melbourne or a couple of purposes? Uh, oh, clearly both. Um, as I said before, obviously a massive history with, with the Blues for the family and unfortunately I wasn't able to play 100 games here, so I did there. So whether the kids want to play, and we've definitely got that option, but I would, I would definitely hold a... There's definitely a strong part in my heart for this club that's given me an opportunity and and it's it's just been such an amazing ride here and played a lot more wins here than, than I did at Carlton, but it's just, I don't know, relationships that I've built here that I never thought I would, and I would have loved to have been a one club player, but can't all have fairy tales, And but this is the second most best thing to a fairy tale I could have imagined for. Um, I would just like, obviously, to thank my family as well. Um, Mum and my late father obviously gave me a massive opportunity when I was younger, but probably my wife, Jackie, She's probably been the best support that I've ever had. Um, obviously, I had talent when I got drafted, but she saw what was what I wasn't doing right and worked out how to get that the best out of me. And without her, I would have, I probably wouldn't have got to the position I am. Um, she's probably been the single handlers, apart from obviously Brad with a coaching sense, but she has moulded my game better than anyone. And considering she's never played the game, she knows my game. But almost better than myself, and I can't thank her enough. And also the kids, and it's a sad day, but it's a it's a happy day too. So, yeah. Yeah, ja Jackie, our first our first interview. Um, <laughs> she's no good at anyone else's game, but she knows mine that game. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I had a number of questions for Jackie, and and Jared had a. Um, you know, a, a few questions as well, but it's probably the first time where I've um, interviewed a player's wife uh, in more detail than I interviewed the player. Uh, Jackie had a lot of questions and, and she was pretty hard hitting, so she, she could be a coach, but she could also sit where you're sitting and be a journalist too. So I felt more under the pump answering Jackie's question than I do any of yours. Um, but she, she has, I mean, she's been a fantastic support uh, for, for Wadey and you know, it's really important, you know, where, where, that you've got a great family behind you and particularly where Jared came from a really strong, had a really strong bond with the Carlton Football Club with his father being a legend of that place. Um, but you know, Jackie's been fantastic for us too because she's been great support for Jared and, and she's been a great person to have around as well. So it's, um, it's just all in all, you know, the, the decision that Jared's come to, it's been an incredibly difficult one, but it just, it, it all feels like this is the, the right moment to move on and Wadey will, will wake up at some point next week and realise that life's only just beginning, you know, it's not ending. You know, you're, you're, a, you're an old man by footy standards, mate, but you're a young man in terms of, of the world out there. So there's a lot of life to live and, you know, with a young family, there's a lot for him to look forward to and he's prepared himself well for life after footy. He could easily go down the coaching path because he's got, he's got great intuition, he's got a great feel for the game. Uh, but I suspect there are there are probably even bigger things for Wadey to move on to. But he's prepared really well for that. Brad, there's been so many experienced players leave the club in recent years. Is it any easier for you when you're dealing with these situations? Uh, it's, it's always it, it's always sad. It's a um, it's an unfortunate um, reality that that players finish at some point, and in all slightly different circumstances in each each particular case. Uh, but a, 
yeah, it's. I think this is a time. I said to Wade before we came in here. This is a this is a time for celebration. You know, it's a it's a time for for people to reflect on what a great contribution Wade's made to football you know, at two clubs. Um, but no, it's 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 always a sad time. But I, I prefer to look back on the all the good times and and think about the opportunities that lie ahead for for Wade. Joe, before you move on, one of the boys is wondering. Will they get their Makita radio? <laughs> 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 no, I'm keeping that. Stuff is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh, Thank you. Yeah.